Rolling? Rolling. Here we go. We're going to give a very heat and take on the most popular Irish tunes of all time. The top 10. Irish dance were. tunes. That's right. Now, is this scientific? Sort of. A little bit. We looked a little bit at what the most popular tunes are on this YouTube channel and did some cross-referencing with other sites. Also, we discussed what things uh, people seem to want to play in sessions very So often. anecdotal, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Some yeah, data, so. some anecdotes, mm -hmm. and here we go. These seem to be the most popular. They are not necessarily the easiest tunes to play. Right, and you. this is not necessarily prescriptive. This is not to say you must learn these 10 tunes first. In fact, as we might discuss, Maybe some of these would not be optimal choices for early on players, but here we go. Okay. I'd say the number one tune that I encounter out there is mm. this one. One, two. <laughs> It's an E minor, it's a reel, and it is Joe Cooley's reel. Yes, that does seem to be just like something that people know or love to play or know about. And I don't know why it is such a ubiquitous tune, especially among players who are really uh, just getting into the game. It's very technical. It's it's not an obvious melody. It's not an obvious melody. It's a little tricky, I think, for the ear, Jumps for the heart. Jumps around a bit. Mm. And uh, it does require judicious breathing strategies in order to keep a nice rhythmic lift going. So that was top number one. All right, moving on. Number two. Number two. One, two. <laughs> Nice D modally jig, banish misfortune. And it's a three-parter. It's a three-parter. It is a three-parter. It is. Uh, it's um, it, well. It's a, in D like D mixolydian. Uh, I think partly, you know, the the name is beautiful. It is. I mean, could you ask for a nicer name? Banish misfortune. It's a good mandate. It is a good mandate. Um, but I think that part of that one's appeal is it uh, the. It, it sounds very Irish because of those C naturals in the D scale. Um, and it, and it, it, it kind of goes somewhere. It's, uh, it really has like a, it, the, the parts are different enough that it kind of takes you on a journey. I, I approve of Banish Misfortune. Speaking of journey, mm. should we go on to number three? Let's do it. One, two. <laughs> It's so well known and so well worn in your fingers that even when you maybe don't play it the way that you anticipated playing it, it still sounds great. It's the cash jig. And um, let's try that again. And you can try the little Bothy Band quote. I think a lot of people know this from the 1975, 76 uh, Bothy Band album um, in which they arranged it this way. One, two. <laughs> First track on the first album. It's a beautiful tune. It's in the key of G, and in fact, on this channel, uh, I also have another variant of the tune called the Springwell, which is a really nice, beautiful version of the tune. So that was number three. On to number four. Moving, yeah. Our first hornpipe entry. One, two. <laughs> Harvest Home, the Harvest Home, uh, probably most popular because of the big triplety lick that happens. Which, I mean, who doesn't want to play that? I think people like the B part too. Well, the thing. Because it builds up to that lick. Exciting. Actually, actually very exciting. It is kind of exciting. Yeah. Um, again, another one like Joe Cooley's where I wonder why Ooh, would you learn this not early on? Early tune, no, no. But it's a goodie. Yep. On to number five. Let's do it. One, two. <laughs> And I gotta say, some people will play. They just roll the whole thing away. 
And I think it definitely, this little E minor jig deserves a little bit more care um, spelling out the jigness of it. Mm, indeed, yeah. indeed. Mm. Um, where are we now? Okay, we're going to carry on with number, uh, with number whichever. What are we on? Six? No, number where six. Where are we? Am I driving? Am I? Who's driving? It's number six. It's number six. <laughs> it's number six. Let's play number six. Ready? One, two. That is the silver spear. The silver spear, ladies and gentlemen. It's fierce, posi it's fierce positive and it's fierce popular. It really, really is. Um, and I have a theory as to why it's so popular. I think that that end phrase that happens in both the A and B parts uh, is is a very a real real piece of ear candy. That That's little bit there, I although I played, I obscured the sort yeah, of but it angular hip. It comes through. It comes through. Yeah, and this is something though. Uh, that I will say is that sometimes the things that do um, ignite. Mm -hmm. interest um, that solicit a real response because they're simple mm -hmm. Bum, ba, de, 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 I think can kind of destroy the tunes a little bit <laughs> uh, at times if we kind of get too lost in just the big gestures yeah. and we don't bring out the little connecting bits that's true so you know bum, da is great to do a couple times but maybe or 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 anything mm. <laughs> all right are we on to number seven we sure friends? are we sure are this one is popular with our american music siblings as well yeah one two <laughs> No matter what you're sure of, the Red Haired Boy is one of the popular crossover tunes. If you are an Irish music player and you are playing some music with folks who play, I don't know, bluegrass or old time music, I almost guarantee someone will ask, oh, do you know the Red Haired Boy? That's right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of those friends mm -hmm. also know this one. Mm -hmm. Number eight. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. <laughs> That's right, and this one is a five-part slip jig. In some ways, I feel like this is not a terribly accessible tune for a newer player. It's a lot to remember. It's a lot to remember, and yet it does tend to be an early-on favorite. Mm. There are a lot of cool parts in this tune, and each one does something a bit different. It's true. Um, so I can see the appeal. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It takes you on a bit of a journey. It has a couple, a couple like sort of key changes in it, and it was on that Bothy Band album. Yep, it is on that Bothy Band album. Um, all right, so on to number nine. Number nine. And number nine, I think, is also a real crossover tune. Mm. Um, a lot of Canadians know this tune. A lot of American musicians know this tune because there are variants of the tune that are popular in all the different uh, variants of Celtic. Music. What could it be? <laughs> One, two. <laughs> which is also known as the Hop High Ladies in American music circles. But our Cape Breton friends play it, our Scottish friends play it. It's a great tune for dancing. It is a real chuggy tune. It's a fabulous tune. And there's so much that we can do with it. You know, you can really play around with the um, chords in there. Yeah. <laughs> The lucky, last one's the one that matters. Lucky number 10. Oh my gosh. What could it be? I could do this all day. Yeah. There are no, a lot of really popular could. tunes. There's a lot of tunes out there. And these are certainly, this is one family's take. We might ask, we might ask you, what would be your top 10? Mm. Leave it in the comments below. <laughs> all right, number 10. Number 10. One, two. <laughs>
The Star of Munster. The Star of Munster. And, and this one has some of those gestures that I think sometimes can get a little heavy. <laughs> kind of lose a lot of the tune there. Mm. So maybe we can play around with it a little bit more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, because they are popular they and because they are often played by newer players, sometimes they get um, thinned out a bit, simplified. Yeah. Uh, and that's okay. It really is. But it's also good to kind of, you know, take a look at them and make sure that you, you know, take a deeper dive and see if you can get, like, how would you play that beginning phrase there, Shannon? Well, let's play the tune one time around. Okay. And, um, but that's a good, uh, that's a good point, is that um, there are a lot of players um, joining us in this community um, who are not new players at all. Um, and sometimes those of us who've been playing for a long time, I think, can get swept away with the notion of, um, you know, these are sort of like oh, the, beginner, the beginner tune. tune. Mm -hmm. And it's really not what tune it is, it's how you play it. There's a lot of music in these old uh, chestnuts and there's a reason why they've lasted this this long there's They're a lot there tunes, yeah. so play them well play them lovely play obscure tunes play well-known tunes it doesn't really matter play them together um, and we'll end with the star monster so thanks for joining us on our top 10 experience what a journey what a journey <laughs> we've been on friends one two here we go everybody <laughs>